talk about cricket once again with all of you, I hope. And alongside me tonight is Ollie. Hello, good evening, everyone. Uh, you may well have tuned in, uh, expecting for us to talk about some squad teams, uh, some squads this week. And we are going to pause that. Uh, made a bit of a decision. So you'll have seen Rich's uh, announcement over the weekend about a couple of the Australian players uh, pulling out of the 100. Um, so what we're going to do instead is we're going to have a look at who else is out there, what some of the changes to the squads that might come ahead, and uh, therefore maybe speculate a little on what's going to happen. Because there's a final bit of news being announced today. Did you catch it, Ollie? Uh, I did, yes. So do you want to break, break news to everyone who's in, who's out? Go on, do it. All right, so... Um, <laughs> Rabada is out, uh, but he's been replaced. So, uh, Lockie Ferguson, uh, I think he's over here and he's been playing cricket um, in the T20 Blast, is stepping in. So, they've made that announcement already. So, uh, I think Rabada was due to be playing for the um, the Originals, uh, Manchester. And so, uh, if you're an Originals fan, um, don't worry. You've got uh, you've got Lockie Ferguson, the New Zealander, in, in instead. Yeah, and that's not too bad. I mean, like having a guy who took three wickets in a World Cup final. Yeah, yeah it's got it's got pedigree. Regularly bowls over 150 kilometres an hour. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's not. It's. You, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't start sticking your uh, sticking your tickets on uh, on Stoke Pub just yet if you're uh, if you're an originals fan. I think. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure I'd be happy. And entirely sure I'd be happy facing him. You know, uh, you may notice I'm a little bit of colour today, having sp- played some cricket over the weekend. I've had like a light bulb. I don't think I need that sort of incentive for him to knock the end off. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so we, we've got a we've got a straight up replacement there for Rabada for Ferguson Manchester Originals. Yeah. Uh, as I said, Stoinis and Rich broke this over the weekend. Stoinis and Warner out of uh, the Southern Brave the Australian players. Um, so there are a couple of holes just around, and we think there might be some more possible ins and outs over the coming weeks. So, yeah. I, I guess what this, is, what this has forced us to do, and I think yeah. what's probably uh, all the all the coaches and the, the guys at the ECB are doing is frantically looking at the international cricket calendar, trying to work out which players um, might be available. And in particular, which players are going to be in the country or in nearby countries where they can uh, they can get ready access to um, to England without having to go through a lengthy quarantine process. So that yeah. throws up a few interesting countries with a few interesting names in the squads. Yeah, I mean it was quite interesting for the for the women's side of the franchises. They they were able to bring in some some big names over the weekend as well. And we shouldn't neglect that. You know the five Indian players being given no objection certificates by BCCI to come and join the hundred. Um, that's got to be hopeful, right? Yeah, so it um, the fact that they got the um, the permission from the BCCI uh, is exciting because um, traditionally the BCCI have not allowed the players uh, from India to go and play another overseas um, short form franchise tournament. Um, so if the BCCI have started to dish out these certificates, the question is: is there is there any are there any other Indian players that might be around uh, available? So. As it, Hang on as a it, minute. Mm. You know, we're fully aware that there is about to be an Indian test team. Well, there is an Indian test team yeah. in the country. Yeah. So the exciting news is India India are here. Mm. They're about to play New Zealand in the test, the uh, World Test Championship final, um, starting on Friday. So that game finishes on the 22nd of June. Okay. And uh, although India then have uh, international commitments in Sri Lanka, they've named the squad that are going to play in Sri Lanka. That's a series that starts, um, T20's ODIs, starts on the 13th of July. But it's a different squad. So they've named a different squad. Players that are not going to be playing over in England in the Test Series are going to be playing in Sri Lanka. So That's, that's I want the point, to isn't it? Because the, the, the Test Series against England starts in, what, the 4th of August, something like that? Yeah. So that as it stands, there's a, there's, you've got Indian players that are here in England, have played, have quarantined, have played in the... Uh, game against New Zealand and potentially going to be sitting around looking for some cricket at the start of at the end of July start of August so does that mean I need to go and get you know Virat printed on the back of my Welsh fire shirt it's not impossible (laughs) I don't know so go on persuade me so for all the inter inter squad cricket you can play 
isn't it better to actually play a bit of competitive cricket? Different format, I know, but actually playing some competitive cricket in English conditions. Mm -hmm. And it's not as if that test side is full of players that are test specialists. Virat Kohli, Ravi Ashwin, you've got some great short format players in that squad. Mm -hmm. It's going to take a bit of negotiation between the ECB and, um, and the BCCI to make it happen. But the fact that the, um, the Indian women players got their, um, got their NCO certificates um, and it's been agreed that they can play in the 100, suggests that there are channels between the ECB and the BCCI open on this. So we can, we can speculate at the moment, but it's, the way that the fixtures play out, it's not impossible. And so it'd be very exciting if it happens. You could imagine the players would be keen to do it. You know, not least, there's some money on offer for not a huge amount of toil. Um, yeah, I think, they'd, I think they'd be able to play about three. I think that looking at the fixture list, I think um, franchise could probably get three games, two or three games out of um, okay. out of somebody from the from the squad. But that that could be two or three wins. That could be enough to to get you well on the way to to getting through to the through to the finals or the eliminator. Well, yeah, exactly. That's a third of your games. And let's also put it the other way. Imagine what that's going to do for your crowds. Imagine what it's going to do for your overall profile of everything. So it wouldn't be a hard sell for me to see why a franchise would want that yeah. involvement. You, I can similarly see, though, why from the Indian side of life, where they're trying to protect the IPL perhaps a little bit, why, why they might say no, no chance of a no objection certificate and NOC on that. They might do, and I think if the if the IPL had obviously still been going on, um, then I don't think this would be we'd be talking about this. However, the IPL paused, and and also I think um, I get the impression, sort of relations between the ECB and the, the BCCI kind of at a point where they both seem to be in dialogue at the moment um, about availability of players. It's just a possibility, and so I think we should all keep our eyes peeled for. For Indian players turning up, and, you know, in in Cardiff, yeah. um, you know, just popping up unexpectedly at, um, you know, up in Headingley or you know any of the other grounds, um, it'd be quite exciting if we can, you know, if anyone sees sees the Indian players out and about around the country, they should they should let us know. Well, this we is my appeal: it. Ravi Ashwin, Jadeja, uh, Ishan Sharma, uh, Virat Kohli, come on over. And join in the fun because I tell you what, you would bring um, some some fantastic talent and uh, flair to it. So um, yeah, so possible, not p perhaps that easy, but possible. Who else is out and about at the minute um, on the radar that some of the teams might be eyeing up? So so there's a there's an ODI series that is uh, is going to take place um, huh. in July. So South Africa are a touring island. So. Okay. So they're going to be sending their, their uh, limited over squad, uh, and I think I think the squad's been announced, and they basically they're, they're sending a, a strong, strong side. You know, so I see Quinton Nicot, David Miller, Dale Stain. You know, they're they're all listed to play in that play in that series, um, and obviously you know there's some there's some very good island players in the, you know, the short formats of the game as well. So I'm sure that all the franchises will probably be quite keen to have you know hitting power of um, Kevin O'Brien in the in the squad um so the dates for that series are also pretty convenient as well so uh i think the last t20 game that the, the south africans play uh is on the 25th of july so just after the, the start of the of the 100 but um tra there's no travel restrictions um between belfast which is where the final of those um of those games is being played and and england so the South African players will have done their quarantine time getting into Ireland. Um, it would be very easy for them to just uh, hop over and, you know, and join up with, with any of the franchise. And, um, you know, and they would be available. For, they'd miss probably the first two, two games. But otherwise, they, looking at the calendar, they should be available for the, for the rest of the tournament. So, so South Africa squad could be a good place to go, to go hunting for players if you're... Um, if you uh, if you're a team manager for one of the one of the franchise yeah and that's a big thing isn't it i mean we can't expect players to be robots and just sit in bubbles all the time but at the same time you know they want to play cricket they want to play high quality cricket they want to earn their money 
you know, whilst their limited playing careers, you know, are 10, 15 years. So it's an opportunity right there. So call it out again, Quinny de Kock, Fafta Plessy, <laughs> Anrik Norkia, come on over. We'd like to see you as well. And uh, clearly, you know, Kagisa Rabado, I presume, is in that squad as well. It's gone the other way. He said, you know, COVID, fatigue, bubbles. I just want to... Yeah, I think he's... He looked at it and has obviously figured it's probably time um, time to get a bit of downtime um, yeah. and, and doesn't want to be, be involved in another sort of squad squad bubble situation. Uh, I guess he plays all formats, doesn't he, for South Africa? Yeah. So, you know, so I'm not sure when they're next playing um, playing test cricket, but you'd imagine he's going to be in that as well. So, uh, yeah, he's probably been been bubble from bubble to bubble over the last last 12 yeah. months. And so, I mean, that's, that's relatively positive. I think there's some really, you know, some pretty big news in there. And clearly we also have ongoing the Vitality T20 Blast, you know, started uh, last week. And there's some, you know, there's some names around there. Now we know the best of that talent is going to be drawn out for the wildcard procedure. That's always been known and that's been drawn, I think, on the 2nd of July. So if you're informing that, you know, the T20 domestic fixtures, you can get a pull straight into the 100 squads. You know, there's a slot waiting for you. But there are going to be some international players there available as well. Um, have any caught your eye? Well, um, one name springs out as the uh, batsman that was basically too good for England in the Test Series. Uh, Devon Conway um, uh, yeah. is, yeah. is, is it really, we're playing against um, playing against India in the Test, um, you assume, this week. But then he's scheduled to, um, to hook up. Uh, with the, his T, T20 Blast squad. So he's in planning to be in the country, um, you know, all summer. So, again, he uh, he seems to be a batsman in Nick. Uh, I think picking batsmen that are in form, you know, regardless of the format is, um, you know, is probably a good a good way of picking a team at the moment. And I think um, he's got quite good T20 pedigree as well, if I remember. Yeah. He's played a fair amount for New Zealand, you know, and, and a few franchises. So it's not like he's just a test, you know, test player. No, he seems to. Um, well, he ticks along at a reasonable rate, even in the Test series, didn't he? So, uh, but yeah, I think you're right. I think he has been playing um, playing short format stuff internationally as well, I mean, and and I think played a bit bit around the world in some of the franchise for cricket. So, so yeah, could be a good good bet. Um, and yeah, there's a few a few of the names that are um, that are around Jimmy Neesham, who was um, uh, I guess familiar from the uh, from New Zealand's run to the World Cup final um, yeah. a couple of years ago, played in that that team. Um, Carlos Brathwaite. Uh, oh, yeah. Again, player that um, could come back to haunt Ben Stokes, I suppose. <laughs> famously, yeah, famously took him apart in the end of that T Twenty um, T Twenty finals. Yeah, I'm not sure Ben Stokes would be delighted to see him again, but <laughs> <laughs> we, you know, he can do a fair bit. I don't think he's involved in the main West Indies squads at the moment, so you would think if he's here playing the blast as well, that that'd be a relatively easy step. But I think there's one other I spotted as well, which is um, Finn Allen, who's a top order batsman. who has been doing quite a bit, I think, um, in, you know, 22 year old New Zealander. So, you know, I think he's uh, IPL wise, he's with the World Challengers Bangalore. So, you know, if you're getting signed for an IPL franchise, you'd be thinking that some of the hundred squads with a whole would be thinking that's a, that's a relatively yeah. good option. Um, so, yeah. Feels like there's you know there's still plenty of plenty of talent is going to be around and in the country having having done their quarantine time and um, you know potentially available in that uh, in that that month of the hundred so yeah hopefully well, some big announcements still to still to come well that's it really you know and whilst we said you know we're going to put a little week pause on a week's pause on the uh, the squad sort of profiles we're doing you know we don't know where that's going to go we haven't seen a ball bold of the hundred yet. But we know that there is going to be a tournament. There are going to be players coming in, and there's plenty out there. Because overall, you know, 500 plus players signed up for that draft in the first place. So there is plenty of desire from the players to get over here and make it happen. You, know, you can understand some of the fatigue that's going on. But uh, we'll be uh, bringing you those transfers, those moves as the squads make them over the coming weeks. Um, I think that about wraps it up for this time. Ollie, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, We'll catch you next time. If you haven't done so already, please give us a like, put a comment down below. Who would you like to see come and join the 100? And most of all, give us a subscribe so you know when we're next on. Thanks very much.